Hello, everybody. Welcome to another interview with Bidex. And in our today's episode, we will talk about how to manage Amazon stores, how to do the whole account management. And for that, I'm really proud to have Anthony Willett, head of growth from Global E-commerce Experts as guest today with us. And welcome to the show. Please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about GEE. Yeah, thank you, Max. Um, yeah, as uh, Max mentioned, I'm Ant uh, from Global E-commerce Experts. Um, I'm head of growth here, uh, the growth department Primarily, uh, the primary function of the growth department is exactly as it sounds. It's to grow our clients that are coming, generally coming across from the US into the UK and Europe. So by growth, we mean that we can help them expand further than just to Amazon. So we might look at other regions. We might look at other marketplaces. And as part of the growth team, we also um, help with account management. So physically getting into the account of the client and actually driving that growth in that individual account as well. Um, so that's basically the, the kind of overview of, of, of the growth team. Um, we also have a team of customer service representatives as well. So they also add to the, uh, to the uh, uh, whole growth section. Uh, so um, we, we all kind of come under one umbrella. Sounds good. Yep. So tell me a little bit more about about the company. Where are you located? How big is your team? How many clients do you have now? And so on. So we're based down in Southampton. Our head office, our UK HQ is in Southampton, which is in the south of, Ham uh, south of England, about an hour and a half south of London. Uh, so uh, brilliant location right next to Southampton Airport. Uh, we've got a 75,000 square foot warehouse here. Uh, where we can you know, house the majority of our clients. We also have warehouse facilities in the Netherlands, and we're looking to expand that across Europe and the rest of the world as well over the next sort of 12 months. Uh, global e-commerce experts. So our main goal is to successfully expand clients into the UK and Europe currently. So our typical client would be an American-based Amazon seller who wants to sell and expand into the UK and Europe. So we run all of the services that are required for that client to open up a store in the UK and or Europe. So that includes VAT services, responsible person, 3PL and warehousing, and of course, account management and growth. Sounds good. It sounds like really helpful. And I know by myself, like expanding to another country or to another continent is like so much hustle and if you don't have the right partner you will well, make been, so many mistakes exactly i've been on the other side so i've worked in account management whilst trying to expand into europe from the uk and it was a really tough task you know you're looking at going out to five or six different partners trying to get everybody to work in tandem and trying to coordinate that is really difficult so to have a one-stop solution um is is a, is a great help so tell me a little bit more about your account management and what do you think are like the the biggest benefits for the sellers so account management in general um i think working on amazon as i have for eight years last eight 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 nine years you learn every day it's a constantly evolving piece um so to have uh individual resource particularly if you're just starting out you know you're just starting your amazon journey to have a to have your own individual in-house resource is expensive and, and quite risky you know you need somebody with experience because you want to hit the ground running you want to make sure that you, you you launch really well um and obviously uh experienced account managers come at a come at a cost um it, you know and the, the other thing is, is that Amazon always starts slowly. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to, you know, kind of hit the ground running, as they say, with Amazon, you know, unless you're a, unless you're a top tier brand that everybody's going to be searching for. Um, it can take, a, a you know, a few months to get some traction. So, again, hiring internally, it, 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 you know, it can take you a while to see your, that kind of return on investment. 
yeah. with a, with an account management agency what you have is you have lots of experience rolled up in a in a, in a very low cost clearly um the time spent on the account would be less than than you had an inter than if you had an internal resource however with the experience that an agency could bring you it would it, it works out to be a lot more cost effective particularly in those for in that first year or two an agency will generally have four to five different people working on an account so that's four to five lots of experiences and expertise that the client would be getting for the price of probably one junior account manager uh, and, and when i talk about different expertise i mean you know we'll have ad, you know different um advertising specialists and graphic designers uh, content writers all of, all of those people kind of combine um and work on that one account so you kind of get the best of the best of all worlds um so that's kind of how account management in general uh, would would kind of would would be a benefit and you know i've seen over the years how much of a benefit that can be um in terms of ge's account management service we're a little bit different i think because what how we've evolved so we started off being this kind of full service type um provider that would offer to you know drive growth and all of that kind of stuff and be the kind of the amazon expert if you like what we found is is that actually the majority of our clients are already amazon experts so they're not necessarily looking for you know real real kind of expertise in certain areas they're looking for more localized kind of management if that makes sense so we what we've kind of done over the years is we've developed a service that can be um that we can change and we can kind of tailor to each individual client so as a really good example some of our clients have their own advertising teams that they want to keep on advertising so we've tailored a service for that particular client that doesn't include the advertising so we actually work alongside their ad their advertising team in order to kind of help drive growth um the sole aim for our account managers is to make sure that we're you know driving growth month on month that we're knowing you know what the what the numbers are where we should be what the objectives should be and we collate all of that information in a report at the end of each month so that, that it's, it's really clear and obvious to the um to the client exactly what they're going to be getting uh, and exactly what we expect from that account got it and so uh, tell me a little bit more what what in your perspective are like the key traits for successful Amazon storefronts and when do you think it's time for an American seller to go the next step to expand to UK and Europe? Well, so I think in terms of when it, when is it a good time for um, and a, a seller to expand into the UK? Well, Really, what we're seeing is, is we're seeing uber successful US brands that want to that have kind of hit a peak, if you like, um, and want to continue to grow their business. And the UK and the Europe, UK and Europe, um, is generally the next kind of step when you think about the opportunities that you open up by coming into the UK and Europe. Uh, it's quite large. Germany's um, you know, the second or third biggest marketplace uh, in the world, so. And, and the UK is not far behind it. So it opens up that kind of opportunity. So I would suggest a good time for a, a US seller to um, expand into the UK and Europe would be once they've got themselves an established kind of run rate business on Amazon US. Um, you know, they can look to kind of make you know, look to make that expansion. And 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 similarly, you know, UK UK based brands that are selling well on Amazon. Uh, that they can expand into into Europe as well. Um, we see we see we see quite a lot of that, and and we're now starting to see European brands that want to start selling in the UK. So you know everybody's kind of in this in this in this situation at the moment where we've come off of the back of lockdown, um, you know, in the COVID situation, which as we all know um, massively boosted online sales, and lots of people are now getting a taste for what is achievable online and to scale the business and to scale growth moving into different regions is is the way to go when you when you consider that our target for 
for our clients is that when we move them from the US into into Europe, we target eighty percent of their US turnover. So you know that's a that's a big jump, and we we actually see a lot of our clients succeed in that. That's a lot of money than what, exactly. what they can do by expanding. Uh, can you tell a little bit more about the time horizon? So how long does it take from? Okay, I I realized I came to the point where I stagnate my sales, for instance, in the US, and I want to expand to, mm -hmm. for instance, Europe and UK. So how long does it take? And also in terms of perhaps um, budgeting investment, what what is needed then? Also in terms of stock, for instance, then um, what is needed to to do the next step? And also then a little bit about the procedure, how you you handle new clients. Do they send the inventory to your warehouses and you then distribute them across Europe and so on? So, yeah, again, this is another benefit of working with a business like ours that um, that offers a one stop solution because we can we can essentially get everything done in tandem. So we've got several departments within the business. Uh, they, they, these are all kind of tied together by what we call the onboarding team. So once the um, once the client has gone through the kind of sales process, let's say, for example, they've bought what we call the golden ticket, which is, um, you know, th they want everything. They want us to, to to kind of be in full control of their expansion. That means that they get you know, all the free PR, we'll do all of the VAT services, responsible person. So all of those services are coordinated within the business by our onboarding team. So they will get. And, and again, it really it really depends per client as to how long that will take you know where they want to go do they want to do all of europe in one hit are they going to start in the uk to begin with um and all of those things kind of depend on what how how quickly that can be done uh the the, the you know getting a um a, a uk vat number is proven to be a, a bit of a challenge at the moment but generally you know that could be done within sort of four weeks and then that kind of that kind of drives the rest of the the services so once we know when the vat number will arrive we then we then tailor the onboarding to meet that deadline so one of the account management services that we offer is what we call an amazon account launch so that's basically where we would build the uk or european store um we would you know build all of the listings put together all of the a plus content build the brand store and get everything, you know, all of the advertising campaigns ready to go, get everything up and running, ready for when that VAT number lands in the stocks in the in the warehouse so that we can literally switch switch on the um uh, uh the, the account and and away we go. So again, we we kind of target ourselves to get that by the time the VAT number's done. So a, a, we aim between four and six weeks. Uh, but obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, and it depends on the client as well how quickly they can get us the the stock. You know, sometimes it's coming in in a container from from China, for example. So it may take a lot longer if it's coming by sea. Uh, but but whatever happens, you know, we can make sure that everything's kind of ready to go for when the stock lands and the VAT numbers are, are, are complete. Yeah, yeah. Like, and do the do your clients then operate solely with a us entity or do they set up a subsidiary in uk or in any other state in germany or wherever so yeah we we work with um with just vat numbers so we'll set them up as a, a uk vat registered company in the uk with our um with our address services as well um so it's a it's a quick and cost effective way to get a to get a, a client set up you know in in selling in, into the into the uk and obviously we do the same in the in our netherlands warehouse as well so our netherlands facilities um very very similar setup to our uk facility so we can do exactly the same in there and of course once you're set up in the netherlands uh, we we can then start to distribute into all, all, all of the other european countries got it tell me a little bit more what do you think are like the best tools to to increase sales increase brand awareness especially if a company is just starting in another continent and is trying to accelerate the growth and expansion over there so i mean there's, there's a million tools that that you can use to complement your online sales 
personally, my belief is that a, a, a really good reporting tool is really, really important, sometimes overlooked. Everybody wants to look at the kind of data scraping tools and, um, you know, making sure that keyword research is right and all of that kind of stuff. Don't get me wrong, that is important, but it's also mega important that you know what you've done. You know, you know what you've done. It's really clear to see. Amazon hasn't got the best analytics reporting. So, you you know, in order to get an overview of what you've done in Europe, if you were just using Seller Central, you'd have to go into each individual account and basically tally it all up in a, in a, um, in a spreadsheet or something like that. Whereas if you've got a, a tool that you can quickly and easily see, you know, how, how many sales you've done across Europe, what your, you know, what your advertising performance has been doing across Europe as a whole, it, it enables you then to kind of really drill down into areas of concern or areas that need a little bit of attention. Uh, and once you kind of know that, that then drives the rest of the, you know, the tasks for the month. Um, so, so for me personally, uh, a, a, a strong, uh, reliable reporting tool is probably the most important tool that you can use on Amazon. And how do you manage the reporting? Do so you have your in-house tools? Do you rely on third-party services that you can recommend? Yeah, we we use a we currently use a third-party service. Um, with it, it's relatively new. We we've started using it for the last few months. Um, what we really like about it is that it's it's really clear. Uh, you know, you can drill down into the data quite easily, uh, and that's kind of what we look for in a reporting tool. Make you know, make sure it's simple. It's got to be easy to understand. It's got to be easy to navigate, uh, and it's got to you know collate the information that you need from it. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're still quite early in the in the in the um, in the kind of time that we've used this piece of software, uh, but at the moment, you know, it's standing up quite strong and it's looking quite good. Sounds good. Sounds good. And then I read and heard about your Amazon account health checks. Can you tell uh -huh. a little bit more what that covers and how it helps sellers to improving their stores? Yeah, absolutely. So the Amazon account health check is a tool that we use to essentially guide our clients on how they can improve their Amazon performance. Um, it's generally for non Amazon account management clients. However, the account management team would use the health check in order to kind of guide them on what needs to be done on that account, if that makes sense. So as a service to our clients, what we would do is we would just essentially go through their Amazon account from start to finish. Um, we would look into many, many different metrics. And what we're kind of looking for is just gaps in performance. We, so we, we highlight these gaps in performance and then we create a bunch of recommendations so that the client can physically take that away and go and work on those recommendations themselves in order for them to improve their Amazon performance. And I mean, we cover things like, you know, sales performance across region. We look at the keywords in a title, for example, we look at the actual listing itself and see if there can be any improvements made there. Um, we also look at all the stats like conversion rates and things like that, just to kind of see if we can spot, spot any gaps and make recommendations in order for that particular client to uh, in, in, improve their performance. Yeah, that sounds That's like very helpful. Very helpful. And uh, it really helpful. shows then it really has helped quite a few clients and you know oh, yeah. I'm really, yeah. exactly yeah i'm really i'm really quite proud of how how many people it's helped you know our, our team are because not only do we kind of create this document for the client as well we actually spend around half an hour kind of talking them through the document so that they can physically take that away and you know and work on um you know work on the recommendations that we've that we've um that we've suggested um and yeah we get a lot of good feedback from that yeah. So when talking about um, Amazon, one really important thing in that it got like more and more important over the years is launching new products. And especially mm -hmm. also now for you, when you help Amazon sellers from the US to launch your products in the UK, in Europe, then it is really key to make like most 
use out of this honeymoon period to push and so on. And I've seen that that you have like a really feasible study for that. Um, could you tell us a little bit more what were like your key takeaways from it and how our listeners can access it afterwards? Sure. So, um, yeah, we a, another account management service that we offer is a feasibility study, as you as you said. So this this kind of came about because we were getting a lot of interest from um, different clients that wanted to expand into the UK, but were nervous about making that step. You know, you're looking at a a large investment. You know. A, 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 you know it could be looking between sort of 10 and 15 thousand pounds or dollars um worth of investment which for some businesses is a, is, a, is a big risk and there were just some that were very nervous about making that step you know it's, it's like a, almost like a step into the unknown um you know when you've when you've solely grown your business in the us you're stepping into new territories you really don't know what to expect so what we what we've um created now is a feasibility study which essentially gives that client an overview of what they can expect by expanding into the UK and any other region that they want to expand into. So generally, you know, uh, we look at UK and Germany, but it might be that there's a client that wants to that wants to expand into France. So we can tailor that feasibility study to whichever region the client wants to to move into. Um, and again, we just look at what the kind of market size is, what the competitors are doing. We really delve into the brand itself to really get a feel for what that brand's trying to achieve and where that brand would fit into the uk market for example uh we then again we just create a, a report that, that that tells the client exactly what the market size is where the three biggest um you know the three big players are what market percentage they have what market percentage we should expect in year one and then we create like a what we call like a forecast which is a really in-depth um kind of 12 month forecast of what you know what would happen and that that comes from you know it goes from the revenue that they can expect to get back in but it also goes through all of the costs you know what profit they're going to make and it gives them a real good view of how their expansion should look over that kind of 12 month period um again it's been massively popular uh, with our clients and you know many of the feasibility studies that we've done has kind of encouraged that client to you know to, to kind of take the step and make the expansion happen and you know they've been really successful uh on on the flip side to that it there have been cases where in fact you know the numbers aren't what they perhaps expected and so it was a deterrent for them to say actually we're not going to do this you know either way we've supported that client in making that yeah. decision which is which is which is what we want to do and that is always like providing the highest high. value and providing input for a long-term relationship to say that works and that doesn't and just to be honest and reliable in that case. exactly that you know if we go to a client and say you're going to make 100 grand in year one and they come through and you know lose 40 grand <laughs> um you know you know we, we we're not experts are we you know we we, we look we don't look exactly. like experts. so you know we, we're we're here to successfully expand clients into the uk and europe and part of that is, you know, that kind of openness and honesty to say, actually, this product probably isn't the right product for this region, um, you know, and, and we can look and help to support and, and look at other products and whatever else we need to do. Um, but yeah, absolutely, like that kind of openness uh, and, you know, and making sure that the client's journey is a successful one is, is where we really kind of, you know, that, that's, that's our kind of core, core business. So we talked a lot about Amazon, about UK, about Europe expanding um, here. Where, what are like additional marketplaces where you also might support? Yeah, so it's a really interesting point, actually. Uh, we're just creating our, our multi-marketplace offering. Um, we work very, very closely with a lot of other marketplaces um, across, across Europe namely ebay wish on buy all you know these three kind of uh, marketplaces um we've we've established really good partnerships with uh, over the last sort of year or two what we're what we're beginning to see is two things the first thing is that not everybody shops on amazon so the biggest 
the biggest um, deterrent for um, for sellers wanting to sell outside of Amazon is that they'll be cannibalizing their own sales. So if they sell a hundred thousand pounds of stock a year on Amazon, the theory would be, well, if I go onto eBay, then I'll just be selling seventy five thousand on Amazon and twenty five thousand on eBay. In fact, we've got statistics that show that you have Amazon buyers and eBay buyers and the crossover, the people that, that shop on both is a lot smaller than you think. So in fact, we, we are now seeing this as a massive opportunity for our clients because you're opening up a whole new pool of, you know, of clients. There's more, a bunch more people that are going to be seeing your product and potentially buying your product. So it's, it's a really, it's a, it's a really interesting, um, a really interesting kind of point that, you know, it's, it's, you know, you, you, you're opening up that new market. There are more people that see your product, therefore you're going to sell more. Um, so, you know, we're, we're kind of really encouraging that at the moment. Um, the, you know, we, we've also got the, these r really strong relationships. And, um, again, the second, the second part to this is that everybody that works on Amazon knows that their support isn't the best. Um, if you get a problem with Amazon, you know, it's difficult to resolve even a simple, even a simple issue that should be resolved very quickly is really difficult. Now, the interesting thing is that, is that these other marketplaces have kind of picked up on that and they're really driving that kind of seller support element. So they're, they're basically making it much easier to work on these platforms. So what, you know, the end product of that is that more brands are going to be kind of more willing to work with the likes of eBay, the likes of Wish, the likes of Mumbai, because they get, they're going to get more success. They know that if, if there's a problem, they can reach out to somebody and somebody will resolve their, their issue. They're not just kind of emailing into a machine and hoping that somebody sorts it out, um, you know, eventually. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, I see the multi-marketplace option as an emerging market almost. You know, more focus is going on these marketplaces as becoming a marketplace. Like eBay, obviously known for its auction site. I think it will always have that element, but also having spoken to the guys at eBay, you know, quite a lot over the last couple of years, they're really keen to make this a kind of brand marketplace, as, you know, for, for big brands to sell on. Um, so again, like it, it is kind of like an emerging, emerging marketplace, it's an emerging market rather, because, you know, it's, it's going to, it's going to grow, it's going to get bigger. And I think that over the years, I think that, you know, we may be sort of two or three years away. But I think over the years we will start to see that gap closing, you know, between Amazon and these kind of other marketplaces, if you like. Yeah, definitely. And you talked about the challenges, uh, especially for Amazon sellers dealing with Amazon seller support. These are like ongoing. Um, we had like many supply chain issues over the past two years with the Corona pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. We have other challenges geopolitical challenges and so on at the moment going on so last but not least the question in your point of view what are like the the biggest challenges that amazon sellers and vendors are going to face the upcoming months next year so uh, what what are they what, what challenges are they going to face so you've got the you know you've got the obvious ones energy prices in the uk and europe are just ridiculous at the moment people's um uh, people's income and disposable income is getting less and less, which unfortunately is going to mean that Amazon purchases are, are going to come down. You know, people aren't going to, people aren't going to be buying as much as they may have done last year or the year before. So I think that's going to be, I think that's going to be the main challenge that sellers are going to face, um, in the coming months. Um, I think that there'll be a big pinch across Q4, I think that we'll see lots of targets missed, if I'm honest, because of the fact that, you know, there's going to be less people uh, buying products. I think, um, yeah, as uh, as mentioned before, um, the, the the support network on Amazon is, is it, it desperately needs improving. Uh, we see a lot, and again, coming into Q4 where we're expecting more traffic on Amazon, you know, everything's going to get busier. Uh, we expect more sales. 
and we will see an uplift in sales for sure just whether or not it's going to be to the levels that it has been in previous years i'm pretty skeptical about but obviously with increased increased traffic people being busier more stuff can go wrong more stuff can go missing um and it's you know it's difficult to kind of resolve those issues um on amazon um a particular problem that we're seeing quite a lot of now is uh, amazon losing stock amazon making mistakes with movement of stock um it's actually really tough to navigate the system and find out what's happened with that stock and how they can you know reclaim back um the uh, the compensation for that, that those losses um so we you know it's, it's been quite interesting we've been talking to a few different um, um, um service providers that offer um a service that actually uh kind of does all that for you so it it, it, will, it will just um work in the background to kind of find all those faults that amazon are making and, and make the make the claims for you so you know they're, they're the kind of main challenges i think we're going to see i think we're going to see lower sales um it'll be as i said increased over q4 but not as increased as we expected um more issues happening within amazon and uh you know difficult to resolve so expanding to new marketplaces is becoming more and more important to keep the top line sales 100 percent. we're you know we, we, we're I'll, I'll tell you how invested we are in the kind of multi-marketplace option um we're just about to launch what we're going to call the marketplace incubator scheme which is essentially a scheme that where our clients that, are, that have got stock in our warehouse can join the scheme and then it opens up uh, um, multiple different marketplaces across europe for them to be able to sell into um you know the cost of the, the cost the cost of the scheme is going to be kept to a minimum again you know our department our growth department its main aim is to increase um client sales and and you know make sure that we're kind of maximizing the opportunity in the uk and europe and absolutely we we genuinely believe that off amazon is a huge opportunity that's not to say that we should ever move away from amazon um you know amazon's a um a, a you know a big beast in the in in the uk and europe for sure um but there are huge opportunities off amazon as well that i think many sellers are missing and that's our uh, ending quote i would say and <laughs> time's up thank you so much for joining us today it was like really insightful i'd say and i think it, there are like so many bits here and there how how amazon sellers really can grow and scale the business by expanding to new marketplaces and i think like ge is like a great partner in in doing so in supporting them and thank you for joining us today thank you and for having me it's been a pleasure hope hope to invite you soon again thank you very much Absolutely love that thank you bye-bye bye-bye